In today's video, we're going to upgrade the stock M3 MacBook Air into a versatile machine tailored with essential apps for productivity, gaming, and an overall enhanced aesthetic. Hey everyone, I'm Rich. You clicked the title of this video. I'm going to be going over my most practical M3 MacBook Air setup. For reference, I like to think of myself more of a casual MacBook user, which means scrolling through the web, checking on emails, using the fun apps like FaceTime and iMessage. Back when I was in university, I relied heavily on the M1 MacBook Air for a myriad of tasks ranging from schoolwork to content creation, and even indulge in a little bit of gaming. Needless to say, I pushed that base model to its limits on several occasions. The M3 Air which I purchased here is not much different from that. This one has 16 gigs of RAM, which I highly recommend in today's day and age, but I set it up the same way as I did with my M1. I'll start with some cool apps first, and then show you what I added in terms of the widgets, the toolbar, and customization. The best part about this video, you're not gonna have to spend a single penny. It's all free. First is Mackie, it's by far my favorite favorite clipboard manager for Mac OS. Have you ever copied multiple texts or images and wanted to have them ready at your disposal just in case you needed to paste them later? For example, if you wanted to paste something you just copied, it will only paste the last item which you copied, not anything you copied two or three copies ago. With Mackie installed, you can copy multiple things and it'll be ready on deck for whenever you need them. So the thing I wanted to paste now that I copied you know, five or 10 things ago will paste right there. If you click on the download now section, uh, it'll name your price as zero, but it is free. I'm not sure why the app store has it listed for $10 though. I take a lot of screenshots, but I don't usually like saving them onto the Mac. I would have to go delete them later and they'll just be too many on my desktop. And the keyboard shortcut to copy a picture onto the clipboard is a little wonky for my hands. Uh, the default is shift command four. I just kind of remapped it to shift command S so that it's more comfortable. But yeah, Mackie, try it out. It's a really cool app. Next, some of you diehard Mac users may know this already, but Hey, it's gotta be rectangle. If you use a Windows machine before, like the one I got right back here, you'll know how easy it is to pull the windows around and have it snap to any sides of the screen. Now with a Mac, you can't do that. Rather, you have to hover over the green circle, uh, you know, hold or click on the tile, the windows each side, and you gotta do this little dance, and you know, it just gets rather cumbersome as you have to select another window, and this weird bar appears in the middle. It's, it's simply just too many steps. With the Rectangle app installed, it'll allow you to snap your windows automatically to any of the sides simply by pulling along the top window. I find this by far the easiest and most useful tool. Yeah, I mean, just look at this. Immediately when I got the M3 Air, I downloaded both of these apps right away so I can just get to do what I need to do. Have you ever wondered if you could run Windows apps on your Mac to possibly play some games? Well, with the crossover compatibility layer, you can. It's open source and works differently as it's not an emulator, but does the work of translating Windows commands into Mac commands and does so in a way that makes it look native. It only takes a couple of seconds to get this running, the user interface is simple, and once you add the DirectX for modern games bottle, you'll have everything you need to start running games. Now I launched GTA 5 through the Steam app on that. I already made a whole dedicated video on gaming on the M3 MacBook Air, which is really, really cool. I think you should check it out after you watch this video. But as you can see right here, I'm averaging around 40 some frames per second on 1080p resolution, normal to high setting. So, hey, I think it's looking pretty good and it's really fun too. If I'm ever having downtime at the coffee shop or library or something like that, you know, might as well just hop on Steam, run GTA 5 and, you know, play around in the server and do whatever. <laughs> Some of you guys that play GTA 5 might relate. Now, Crossover does cost $74 to buy the license, but they are very generous and gave us a 14 day free trial. So if you wanna try it out, give it a shot. Tell me what you're playing down in the comments below and let me know how that's running for you if you do decide to download this. Now, as far as my desktop, right out of the box, the first thing I did was added my top two favorite widgets, weather and screen time. I shoved them both in the top left corner and I just think it looks neat that way and it just gives me all the important information that I need now. I watch a lot of other videos about people customizing their widgets to have you know custom clocks or abstract looking calendars and battery indicators and note pages and I, I think they're pretty cool and all but uh, to me they just seem a little bit gimmicky. I don't have any real use for them. I like to stick to the stock apps as it's less of a hassle to download more things. So first screen time. I think it's important for everyone as I generally want a reminder of how long I've been on the Mac so that way I know when to take my breaks or see how long the time has passed and the effect it has on my battery. Screen time is pretty important. I think almost all devices should have that if you're you know, an iPhone, Android user, whatever you're doing, because sometimes we can be really sucked into our work, social media, content consumption that you know we don't know how much we're actually spending on devices every day, every week, or every month. 
So I'm really glad that the stats are here and I always wanna put it there. And then weather. It's just quicker than having to open up an app or search for the weather in my area now. And I think Apple weather works well enough. It just gives me the information I need. Everything's laid out right there. I don't need to whip out the phone. And it just looks cool. Now display. I'm gonna tweak the display real quick. Uh, if I head into system settings, scroll down to display. I like to switch on the uh, more space option as I think it kind of shrinks everything down. And this gives me more you know, space to fit more text on my screen as it says so right here. And personally, I like to turn off True Tone for any of you guys that don't know what it is in Apple devices. Uh, it essentially makes the display match a natural color of the environment. So for example, if you're in a room with you know, warm lighting like at this lamp in the back, it'll like sort of try to dim the display, make it a little bit more yellowy, orangey to make it look a little bit easier on the eye. I think it's a cool feature. Occasionally I'll have it turned on if I'm work, you know, working late at night in a dark area, but I like to turn this off for most of the time because I want to see the natural colors on my display. And this is really cool or useful for, you know, viewing content or editing pictures and videos. I just want to see, you know, what looks the most color accurate. So I like to turn this off. Now there's another section of display that's under the accessibility tab. And this allows you to turn up the display contrast and I have to slide it up just a little bit to make the colors pop, which is nice. And if you slide your cursor down here to the dock and do the two finger click uh, on this bar, uh, I turn on magnification as I think it makes the dock look a little bit more interactive. When you slide your mouse cursor along here, it looks like your apps are sliding onto you. I also turn on minimize window into application icon and I'm not sure why this isn't turned on by default. This helps prevent all my tabs from minimizing to the dock on the right and prevents unnecessary clutter. To me, this makes a bit more sense as I know what tab I opened up and you know what it belongs to which apps and rather than having a quick draw menu which makes my dock look very messy, you'll, you'll know what I mean exactly if you kind of see what's going on here. I also added an Instagram app on here too. Bet you never thought you can get one on this. Well, I lied, it's not anywhere on the app store. You can't just download it. It's just a shortcut that I made it open up as a separate window. If you wanna do this, you can go into Google Chrome, press the three buttons icon here at the top right, go down to save and share, click on create shortcut, and click on make a window. That way when you open up the shortcut, it will act as a completely new window and not as if you pulled it up like some type of Google search. This will make a shortcut icon, which I then replace by downloading the Instagram PNG image from the web and copying that over and pasting it here and hey, voila. Now you can pretty much do this with any other app or folder. As you can see right here, I laid out some examples like the wallpapers to games to documents and all that. I just Google searched up some uh, you know game icon image PNG, copied that over, pasted it, and it just looks more aesthetically pleasing and a little bit easier for me to access it when I need to rather than having all the blue folders look you know, all the same. Another thing I like to do is show battery percentage and using stacks, which helps me organize items on your desktop faster by grouping them by similar types. Again, very useful for decluttering your desktop. We're trying to keep it minimal here, try to keep it productive. And then moving on to Safari, we've got some pretty cool customization options it's already built in. Uh, you can drag and drop any image to instantly give your tab a fresh new look. This is really dope. Or you can go down to the bottom right, click the options icon, and check or uncheck these shortcuts that show up on your start page. You know, there's a lot of things I personally don't wanna see here when I boot up Safari, as I think it looks a little bit unattractive, so I'm just gonna take these out. Okay, that's much better. It's cleaner and it feels a little bit faster. Maybe I'm tripping, I don't know. <laughs> your Mac can also greet you with a login message on the lock screen. So if you go to system settings, hit lock screen, and click the show message one lock, you can set it to whatever you want it to say. You like what I put right here? Now going back to some of the apps, I like to download stats. This can display CPU, RAM, and SSD readings. And this is useful for anyone that likes to keep a close eye on the machine at times, especially when uh, I'm gaming on the Mac, which doesn't happen that often, you know, other than there's occasional GTA 5 sessions. But if I'm out on the go and there's nothing else, hey, we'll work with the Mac. It can display my RAM usage across different apps so that I'll know which ones are slowing my machine down and which ones I need to, you know, get rid of. Also the network speed to see if the place I'm connected to at the moment has good Wi-Fi. A variety of other system processes too, which can come in handy. So the CPU temp, you know, what if this thing gets too hot during my usage or if I'm outside during the summer. It's always good to have this down. Another app which is very productive depending on your use case is amphetamine. Now, despite whoever came up with this name, 
This app keeps your Mac awake for however long you want. The pill icon appears on the top menu bar and you can set it to stay awake on certain apps or while a file is downloading. You can also set it to move the cursor after five minutes of inactivity. You know, pretty cool for you work from home users out there, so don't tell your bosses. This remains intuitive and easy to use for those who don't need all the bells and whistles. So yes, I usually turn this on when I'm downloading and uploading large files or if I want the screen on and when I'm just trying to follow some instructions online, you know, sometimes a Mac just turns off the display and goes to sleep, which can get a little bit annoying because I gotta go back and you know log in every time, but this, pretty useful. Alfred is a cool productivity app which is basically spotlight search, but supercharged. Instead of hitting command space, you hit option space. And the trick with this is that it finds applications and files much faster as it really gets into your folders. You can even do quick Google searches as it will take you right there on the page, without having to open up Safari, you know, click on the search bar and so forth. Uh, for example, if I want to search up um, uh, M3 MacBook Air to buy on this or something, I don't know. It will take me right here on Google. You can quickly search through things in your contacts and messages and more. I've only ever stuck to the free version, so it works pretty well for me. If you hit command space space, I can find folders and documents much quicker on here. So I highly recommend Alfred, give it a shot. Next is Flip Clock, which is a nice and neat screensaver that makes my M3 MacBook Air look like a flip clock. It's minimal and displays a time with a flip animation in large white numerals against a black background and does look pretty cool at a distance. You can do this by downloading it and opening up screensaver from system settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom where the other tab is and apply the theme. What do you guys think? All right, now the last app I have on the list here, uh, which isn't unique to Mac alone, but for any devices in general is Bitwarden. All right, this helps me organize all my passwords on any device. This service uses an encrypted vault to store all your passwords and it's protected by single master password. This is great because especially in this day and age where we have so many accounts and emails and logins to remember, it just gets too much to write down or keep track of. And I thought about putting it on like a Google doc or something like that, but it isn't the most secure. Each time I create a new account for something, I simply copy the username and password onto Bitwarden so I can keep a handy book of login information whenever I need it. You can add links, there's two-factor authentication, and much more. Uh, Bitwarden, it's trusted by businesses and enterprises all over the world. I use Bitwarden to keep all my passwords and logins for everything nowadays. Just make sure your master password is very strong and super unique to you as you'll be pretty much hosting all of your information on here. If you're wondering, Bitwarden does operate with zero knowledge encryption. That means Bitwarden has zero knowledge to retrieve or a way to reset your password. So if you do completely forget it, you'll need to delete your account and start a new one. You know, not even they can get in. So yeah, personally, I've been using Bitwarden for three and a half years now. All right, so what do you guys think? Uh, is this the most practical M3 MacBook Air setup? At least this is my take on it. I guess you could call this a uh, what's on my M3 MacBook Air. <laughs> Tell me if I'm missing out on any of the apps that you think is cool or I should notice. I'm always open to hear what you guys are saying. Your feedback is definitely valued. Don't think I'm not reading each and every one of you guys. But yeah, that's all I got for today's video. So thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe and until the next video, I'll see ya. Man. <laughs>